Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. Today, we have a look at this puzzle here. And this puzzle does not only look beautiful in the bean roll introduction, it also looks beautiful in reality, as you can see. Really, really well made and super cool looking. And in the next weeks, you can expect a lot of cool videos to come uh, with a lot of cool, high quality and amazing puzzles. So be sure to check the upcoming videos out. Subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell if you would like to get notified about future videos. Today's puzzle is called The Machinist's Stash so it's kind of a trick box which you need to open up. It is manufactured in an excellent quality from aluminium and brass by Andrei from Ukraine. The puzzle design however was not designed by him, it was designed by Marcel Gillen already in 1992, back then released under the name Fireplug. I don't know the old puzzle so no advantage here for me. Andre, by the way, is also running a YouTube channel where he's showing some amazing projects he's working on. The YouTube channel has the name Bruns. And it's showing a lot of cool manufacturing stuff. Link up here, so be sure to check it out. And before I start, I would like to show you another gadget. And the gadget is basically the same as the last time. You asked me to show you also the other variant of this 360 book I showed the last time, the Mount Fuji. This one, if you remember. A book that, when opened up, is displaying a three-dimensional object. This was the Mount Fuji the last time. And this is the Earth of Moon variant. Also pretty cool, showing the Earth and the small moon over here. <laughs> so also pretty cool design, three-dimensional. I personally like the Mount Fuji edition more. And one of you raised a comment that a magnet back here in the front cover and the rear cover would be beneficial because you can just lock it together. I agree to this, this would be a cool feature. But today you probably need to lock it by a paper clip or something because it does not have any magnets. These have been the two 360 books. Next stop, the shelf in my living room. And now let's continue with this puzzle. No idea how to open it, no idea about the difficulties. So let's just check it out. Let's find out how to open this thing and then let's discuss or let me explain you how this works. Okay, let's have a look. As I said, I have no idea if this has any meaning here or if it's just a design item. If you get what it means, let me know in the comments and let's see what we have here. We have two sticks, as I mentioned. Both of them in lock condition. We have this thing on the bottom, also locked in place. Just a design ring, same as these down here. Oh, there's something inside. Sounds to me like a pin. Let's turn it upside down. Oh, yes, right move. Now I can move this one in and out. And it reveals some notches in this stick. A notch here which goes all the way around. Another notch over here. And another notch over there. If I turn it around I can definitely unlock it. So there seems to be a pin, a hole in this stick. And the pin, the pin is running here up and down. Let me let me get my notebook to just draw how this thing could look like. And this is actually my favorite type of puzzle. A puzzle is a hidden mechanism, which provides you some noise coming from inside, but at the same time, you need to understand how these parts are interacting. Very cool. I already can tell you I like this puzzle a lot, even if I haven't done anything so far. But uh, let me get my notebook to just take some notes. So this is the upper one it like so, a small chamfer, like so, and now in the center, this is the key, how does this work? There's also a small mark down here I notice, but this is probably only or should only help you to orientate correctly. Let me see, now it's free. If I pull it over here, and then there's another notch, the one over here, over there. So there seems to be a notch like going until this ring, like over here, let's say. What's irritating me is I can go over here in this notch. So obviously there's a pin down here, which is going here up and down. There's a hole here. It's pin, if it's in it will lock it and now it's 
going out and but it's still sliding in this notch so i can move it over here okay and there's another notch here on the bot uh here this one okay and now i'm in the ring so i can push this one in until this um this pin is sliding inside of this notch but it can't get out through the same notch as it went in this is pretty interesting i can push it over here all the way in ah okay 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 so this is interesting and this notch seems to be designed in a specific way if we look at it as this shaft would be flat if you look at it it should look like this so we have this notch over here and we can leave this notch through a channel this is what we're gonna do now the channel goes all the way through until here but the interesting thing is we can't go back again so there seems to be a step here somewhere we go with the pin if we pass this point the pin jumps down this step and if you want to go back you need to twist it like 90 degrees so the, and then we can go back into the main notch not sure if you understand this, but this is um, difficult to explain, but it's quite logic. We can run with the pin over here. We can go over here, but we can't go back. To go back, we need to go through here and then we are back. And this is what we do. On the center, there seems to be another notch. But this one is closed at a certain point because I can't, I can only twist it here close to 360 degrees but not completely 360 degrees. So this one's open and you can walk all the way around. Okay, so I think the first pin we understood. The question is how does it interact with the second one? But I still have no idea how to free the second pin. And this is definitely interacting with the first one because as you can see, if I move this one, this is heavily moving. These are definitely somehow interfering or connected. What am I overseeing here? Something, there must be something in addition which I don't get at this point. So to me it seems that this pin here is only held in place by this pin. One thing I noticed and which makes no sense according to my theory is this detail. If I move it back, there's this noise. Listen. If there would be the pin this and it drops out, why should there be any noise when the pin is or pulled by gravity downwards? Where should this snapping noise, this click noise coming from? You hear this? Watch out. It feels like kind of spring loaded. Do you see this? The, the stick is pushed back. There seems to be something in addition inside because if I push over the stick, to be pushed back maybe this pin maybe this pin can drop out until a certain position and then there's a spring over here which keeps it outside for a tiny bit so i'm quite sure that this is not a normal pin but a pin that is maybe spring loaded or something but if i go back slightly i'm blocked if i go further i can move again and if I move further, I'm kept. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. I need to maybe run between this notch on the wall, let's say. So if I have the notch here, there is this little thing, whatever this is, in between here leave the maze and run here on the outside okay now i drop into something else <laughs> also won't work let's try also the other direction let's try 180 
Oh man, this is so clever. Yes, and I can see already what happened. And here we go, second one out. And oh, this is the locking mechanism and the secret stash box. Oh, come on, you should have, you could have put something inside, man. <laughs> the secret stash box or the machinist stash box is solved. Pretty clever. Oh, okay, now I understand. Oh, this fooled me so hard. This fooled me so hard. There are two pins inside. Actually, I think it could also be realized with one pin. Let me lock it and unlock it one more time and then I'm gonna explain you how it works. Okay, I think I got it. So now let me explain you how this works. It's pretty cool. Pretty simple design actually, which is quite complicated to understand if you can't see it. So let me first explain you how to open it and then I'm gonna explain you exactly how it works, okay? So first step is to turn it around and I can twist this one. I now go into this position where it's completely in. Then I'm gonna turn it around that this thing here, this small feature is pointing upwards and therefore this is for actually for orientating the puzzle. I move this one slightly back. Now I twist it by 180 degrees. I'm not sure in what direction. I will now rotate it in this direction counterclockwise. Let's see if it works. Yes, only works in one direction. You will see later why. 180 degrees. And then I can just pull it out. It's that simple. Pull out the second one and the second one is really only interlocked here with the first piece like so. And then I can open it up. And now let me explain you how this actually works. We have these two pins here. Both are interacting with the mace. There's one who is only coming out due to gravity and going in, depending on how you orientate it. The other one is spring-loaded and it's always out, except in one situation. I'm gonna show you now. In the initial position, these two pins are inside here in this notch. So the gravity pin is over here and the spring-loaded pin is over here. So I can't move it in this direction, but also can't move it in this direction because the gravity pin is blocking it. To unlock it, I need to turn it around. So the gravity pin moves inside and the spring-loaded pin is now over here and I can now start twisting it, but not 360 degrees as I showed you or as I noticed in the beginning. I can only rotate it until here and the other way around until here. What I need to understand is that there is an exit to this notch. Only one exit and this is this one. If I move through this notch over here, you can see it's not consistent in depth. It's like slightly tapered or chamfered. So it means if I move it, move with the pin through here, you can hear this click noise and it jumps down into this notch. I can't go back anymore because there's a little step here. It's at the same height as this one, but not at the same height as this one. So I jump in here and now I'm caught here and I can move all the way around and I can also find a way back, which is this little feature here. And if I go back, this was what I noticed in the end. I can walk up this ramp and this will push in the pin and later it will jump again in here and then I start over from the beginning. What I need to notice, and this took me quite some time, is I need to go over here, cluck, you hear the first click, and then, and this I noticed by the stick getting pushed out again, you go up this ramp, and I felt this resistance, but not all the way until you jump back in this notch. You need to stop on this top, over here, exactly over here. And at this point, you can twist over here and you fall in the notch again and trapped. And this is why the direction of rotation is important in the end. Or you go like 180 degrees from this notch over here and this is your exit hole. And here you can move out and pull out the stick and you are free and then you can open the puzzle. Pretty clever, a great design, an absolutely great design by Marcel Guillain. And also the craftsmanship is excellently done by Brands. If you look at it in detail, this looks just amazing. Overall, a super cool puzzle, exactly the type of puzzle I like the most. So absolute recommendation from my side. Regarding the difficulty, I would rate this puzzle with a four out of a maximum of five because this puzzle can take a lot of people a long time because of this very last detail. 
to find the exit hole. I put your link in the video description if you are interested to buy a copy yourself. Let me know in the comments what you think about this design. Is it too difficult from your point of view? Is it an easy puzzle? Did you try it maybe yourself already? Well, let me know also your favorite puzzles and I maybe can also try them on the future on my channel. If you have liked what you've seen, just subscribe, hit the bell if you would like to get notified about future episodes. And there are gonna be definitely some super cool puzzles I can tell you already during the next weeks. So stay tuned and until next time, keep on puzzling.